When we are evaluating information, it helps to think about not only the literal source of the information, who wrote it, who published it, and why, but what the source is really telling us. The terms highlighted in this unit help provide a scheme for categorizing information. Primary sources are the original presentation of a piece of knowledge. We usually talk about it in the context of history or autobiographies, but in this case we're referring to the results of research. In contrast, a secondary source relays information from other sources by interpreting or reporting on primary sources. Thinking about whether we're using a primary source or a secondary source helps us think about how far removed we are from the original source of information. Anytime we're not looking at the primary source, we need to remember the information has been interpreted. Note that even an empirical source can include secondary information, depending on the format. Another way to think about the types of information sources is to ask if they contain new knowledge or insight. We don't want to eliminate a source if it isn't a primary or empirical source, though. Review articles or reviews on other forms can provide a helpful overview of the topic. One way to put these ideas in perspective is to ask how we would classify the information we've read about stress. The ideas can be applied even though the information is not in an article format. Pause this presentation and decide if you think the report about the MTV stress poll is empirical or non-empirical, peer-reviewed, like a peer review article or not, and a primary or a secondary source. Then, do the same thing for the chapters. As noted in this slide, the report of the results of the MTV poll is empirical. It's reporting original results, so it's a primary source. There's not any additional information that would be considered non-empirical or also make it a secondary source. In cases like this, we also assume that the peer review process was not like that which is used for a scholarly publication, given that the intention was to gather information for a particular purpose. Publication was the goal. That said, we would hope the credentials of the polling organization signals credibility. Notice, too, that I said the MTV results aren't a scholarly or a popular publication. The style of the writing, presentation, and the way the information was shared doesn't fit with either one of those sources. Textbooks, on the other hand, can have things in common with both scholarly sources and popular publications, but they're different in many ways. Each textbook chapter can be considered a non-empirical review article. Their purpose is to summarize what we know rather than present new information. They do not go through the same peer review process as an article, but are often reviewed by scholars with knowledge of the content. 